Hi guys, and uh, welcome to this video. So today we'll be looking at this question under sound waves. Uh, so let's break it down and see how we can uh, go about it. One end of a steel pipe has a length of 60 uh, meters and it is struck, there's a blow which is being struck to one end. So the listener who's on the other side hears a sound, two sound intervals. Um, <sighs> Hi guys, and welcome to this video. So today we'll be looking at this question under waves. Uh, to be exact, these are sound waves. So let's break it down to see how we can um, go about it. So one end of a steel pipe of length 660 meters is struck a blow. A listener at the other end hears two sounds at an interval of 1.89 seconds. So the idea is sound will travel through air and the other sound will travel through the solid uh, or rather the steel pipe. That's the reason why we have that interval. So now the density of this steel pipe is um, eight times 10 to the power three kgs per cubic meter. And the velocity of sound we've been given uh, as uh, 330 meters per second. So what we're looking for is uh, the bulk modulus of elasticity of this particular steel. So let's break it down. Let's see how we can answer this question. Okay, so let's uh, break down the question now. So we have a pipe. Let's just uh, roughly draw the pipe. This is our pipe. So what we know about this pipe is that it has a length of uh, 660. So 660, like that. Then the velocity in air, so let's say V in air. The velocity in air is uh, 330 meters per second. The length of this um, pipe is simply 660, like we've stated there. Now, there are two sound intervals. So, we have two uh, sound intervals, so two sounds. It's important to note that the two sounds, let's call this sound one. Sound one is uh, the sound that is going through the steel. So you can say through the steel pipe. Then sound two is in the passage of the same uh, uh, a steel pipe, of which in this case is just uh, through air. Okay, so someone produces a sound on one side, two sound intervals were heard. One was traveling through the steel, the other one was traveling through the air. So now which one between the two is greater? It's important to note that the velocity in the steel is greater compared to the velocity in air. And the reason of this is because um, particles in a solid or in a steel are, are closely packed compared to particles in air, meaning that the velocity in steel will be faster than the velocity in, in air. So since the speed in steel is greater than the speed in air, it means that the time in air is greater. Why are we saying this? Um, think of it logically. If it takes a, a shorter time to get from one end to another in steel, it will take a longer time for it to move in air. So in other words, what we're saying is that the time in air is more compared to the time in steel. This is what we're saying. So the time interval between the two is 1.89, or we've been given 1.89. So since the time in, in air is greater, we're going to say the time in air minus the time in steel will be equals to the time interval difference, which is 1.89, like that. Now, since for air, we've been told that the velocity for air is this value that we have here. Let's see how we can find an expression for the time in air. We know that speed is equals to distance over time. We know this. So the speed given in this case is, uh, let's just call it V in air. The distance, uh, we'll call it L, that is uh, for the pipe, which is L. And the time taken, we'll just call it T in air, like that. Then, if you want to make um, TA the subject of the formula, we can cross multiply so that VA TA is equal to L. So TA 
is equals to L over V A. So here, where we have um, the time in air, we can replace it with this formula where we're saying that time in air is the same as L over velocity in air minus time in steel. Everything is equals to that value, like that. Okay, so this was just an expression for that guy. So now that we have this, we can easily find um, the time in steel. Remember, the length is um, the length of the pipe is six hundred and sixty, and the velocity of sound in air we have been given three hundred and thirty minus so the time in steel. So this is called T S is equals to one point eight nine. So here, what we get is a two minus T S is equals to one point eight nine. So we can have it as 2 minus 1.89 is equals to Ts. So the value of Ts is equals to 0 0.11 seconds. So the time it takes in the steel uh, is uh, 0 0.11 seconds. So the reason why we're interested in the time for the steel is because, uh, first of all, we need to find the velocity in the steel. The same formula that we use there, where we said uh, velocity or speed is equal to distance over time. So velocity in steel is equal to the distance, which is L over time. Time in this case is what? Ts. So Vs is equal to L is uh, 660, while Ts is 0 0.11, meaning that the velocity in steel, this velocity that we have here, will be given as 6,000 meters per second. Now, look at this. Remember this statement that we had put here? We said the velocity in steel is greater than the velocity in air. So it makes sense that Vs is 6,000 and Va is uh, 330. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and um, calculate uh, the modulus of elasticity. So to start with, it's important to note that uh, the relationship between the two is uh, velocity v is equals to the square root of y sub s over density rho. Now let's just make um, y sub s the modulus of elasticity, the subject of the formula. We can first start by squaring both sides. So we square there, we square there. So at the square root cancel the square, leaving us with y sub s is equals to velocity squared times density rho if we do the cross multiplying. Then from there, we can just do our substitutions. So y sub s, in this case, will be equal to what's the velocity? Well, we're focusing on the steel now. So the velocity of the steel is um, 6,000. And then we square it, multiplied by density rho. So density of this particular steel, we're given as 8 times 10 to the power 3. So y sub s, if we do the multiplication here, we're going to get 2.88 times 10 to the power 11 newtons per square meter. So that's how it's calculated. So thank you very much. In case you have a question, please feel free to drop it in the comments. I'll be happy to respond.